hey you guys welcome back to the channel today i'm going to be doing the on my shelf tag and i was tagged by brie over at brie hill and she tagged me on twitter so i will make sure her channel is linked down below as well as the original creator who i don't want to mess up his name i actually took a screenshot his and i because i just watched his video to make sure i had an understanding of what i should be doing here his name is ian broom i hope i'm saying that right so I will make sure the original creator's channel and video is linked down below as well as Breeze. So make sure you check the description box. And with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. So I reached out to you guys on Twitter and asked you if you would send me some numbers. And a couple of you did. And so I did go ahead and write those numbers down just so that I could go to my bookshelf and pick out the books so I haven't really done too much besides picking out my books. So I do have I believe it's like six sets of numbers so I don't have like an actual like bookshelf right now which is why you guys never really see me filming in front of one plus I have a pretty tiny apartment um, but there is two, like kind of like a set of like four bookshelves in one of my storage closets and two of them I cleared off and just put my books so I have a shelf that has all of my hardcover books on it and then a shelf that has all of my paperbacks on it and so I just decided to go ahead and do the on the shelf tag because I was really looking forward to doing this so we're gonna get started so the first numbers that I have is shelf one book 11 and I was so excited when I saw this book got picked so this is X Bob by Peter Gethers oh sorry you guys This is X Bob by Peter Gathers. And this Peter Gathers, I hope I'm saying his last name right. This is an author that I did not know anything about. I've never read anything by him until I read this book. And overall, I absolutely love this book. So every once in a while, I love going to a dollar store, a dollar tree, and just sifting through the books and finding some books that I think is really interesting. I did that for the first time, I believe it was last year, and previous to that, I hadn't done that in quite a while. But I love doing that. I have found some of my favorite books that way. Um, and that is where I found this book at. This book is so dynamic. We follow a guy named Bob and we follow him, I believe it's from the time either he's starting college, like in between high, end of high school and starting college, or it's after, right after he finishes college on his way to medical school. I can't remember, but we're following him and we follow him throughout the span of his life. So all of the ups and downs that comes with, you know, a full lifespan, love family. It, this book is great, it has a great family component and just tons of drama and just other stuff going on i i really enjoyed this book i read this book i believe i read it in one sitting on yeah on saturday on a saturday and it was just so good and i yes yeah, so i really enjoyed this book i didn't care for the ending peter but i did enjoy this book a lot um the next set of numbers let me move this over I got a tiny little space the next set of numbers is shelf two book 11 now i have talked about this book before this is horrible harry in room 2b by Susie klein and i mentioned that i used to read this series when i was younger this is the horrible harry series we follow harry he's a second grader I think we follow him up to fifth grade or something like that. The books are really tiny and I just love these books. They're so cute. They deal a lot with right and wrong, friendship, that kind of stuff. Um, and these are from Puffin, the Puffin books. And it's recommended for ages seven to 10. So I reread this book again in December or January. I can't really remember, but I will link the video down below where I was talking about it. And I still enjoyed it so much. It just reminded me of when I read it when I was younger. So I like that. And then the next book. So this is the first book that's unread. Now I have skimmed through this book and I have read just a little bit of it. And also I stood in the store and read it for a while, but I wouldn't consider this a read book because I haven't read it from cover to cover. And this is the Book of Odds from Lightning Strikes to Love at First Sight, The Odds of Everyday Life. And as you can see, I got it for $3.99. It was on the clearance rack at my bookstore and I picked it up. It just was so interesting. Like there's so many different facts in here. Um, like for instance, it says, 
Did you know one in 284 employed people, 16 or over, is a school bus driver? Uh, let's see what else is in here. Gender Wars. The odds a romance novel reader is a female. 1 in 1.1. The odds a romance novel reader is a male. 1 in 10.5. And they cite all of their sources and stuff. So I just love that kind of stuff. I like reading about that kind of stuff. And this is a book that I would sit down and read. It is also a good book to have as like a coffee table book. You know, like maybe in your living room or something like that. But I like these types of books. So... Um, I'm glad that I have this and every once in a while I'll just pick it up and read a little bit more. So there's that one. And then the next set of numbers is also my other unread book and it is Shelf 2 Book 54 and this is Native Son by Richard Wright. Now I have had this book for longer than I care to tell you guys. <laughs> uh, probably about two years. Is that right? probably close to two years because when I first started school like started graduate school um I did find this book at some point during around my first year I know that on clearance for just a couple dollars and I picked it up and I was like you know what I'm gonna get back into reading well we know I didn't do that because I didn't get back into reading until last year but I had heard a lot of good things about this book and I had just never read it so um I'm really looking forward to read it, but honestly, I've been putting it off because I don't know if this book is going to make me uncomfortable. And that's why that was one of my goals, because it does deal with the African-American experience. And it's about a guy who's headed to jail um, because he, what did he do? I think he murdered or raped somebody or both or something like that, or either he's been accused of it. Um, and so it deals with the African American experience, you know, set in Chicago back in the 1930s. And so I have been putting off reading this book and I know I just need to do it. I am at a place where I'm ready to read books, even if they make me uncomfortable. It's just something that needs to be done. So this is a book that I want to read. And when I saw that this was one of the books that was picked up, I was like, okay, well, now I'm publicly calling myself out, so I have to read this book, right? So I'm looking forward to reading this book. It is kind of big. It's around, I'm trying not to see the end. Where is it? How long is this? I probably should have looked at that before I, uh, it's about, is this? Well, I know it's around 400 or so pages. <laughs> so yeah, this is definitely a book that I definitely, definitely want to sit down and read. So if you've read it, let me know how you enjoyed it or how you didn't enjoy it. Doesn't matter. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I don't want those to fall. Then my next set of numbers was shelf two book 30. And for that, this is, this was my first read of the new year. And I actually did read this book in one setting. And this is Milk and Honey by Rupi Carr. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I actually love the way this book feels. It's, I don't know. It's not, um, I don't know how to describe the feeling, but if you felt it, you know it feels really good. Um, and so this book right here, this was actually another book that I picked up at my school bookstore. Every once in a while I just go in there and I just browse the clearance section. And I also got this book for just a couple dollars. And I really liked it. Now, this is a book that I was on the hunt for because I had seen people on BookTube talking about it. Specifically, Brie Hill talked about this book. Tori from That Cozy Book Nook talked about this book. Olivia from I Livy for Books talked about this book. Also, Julie from Pages and Pen. Yeah, isn't it Julie? From Pages and Pen talked about this book. Now, she didn't particularly care for this book, but the other three did like this book. But it's something I wanted to read for myself. I actually enjoyed it a lot. Um, 
and I read it in one setting and it was to the point where like literally I was like uh screenshotting some of the poems in here and like sending it out to different friends and stuff and also I just think it's kind of interesting that this is a book that I own this is a book that I thoroughly enjoyed um this is a book that really just grabbed my heart and if you pay attention to social media there's so many times you know how sometimes you see these quotes and stuff flying around that people are retweeting and reposting on their Instagram I know I do sometimes and a lot of times like I'll look up in the corner and it'll say milk and honey and I'll recognize the poem and I'm like yeah that was a good one that was powerful you know so I just thought that was interesting but um yeah this book was definitely a book that was influenced by booktubers that I picked up and I enjoyed it and then the final set of numbers was shelf one book 23 and this book oh my goodness love you guys picked some great books for me to talk about <laughs> i just got i feel like maybe i got super lucky or something this is letters to our daughters mother's words of love by christine van randen and molly davis and it's actually Jack Canfield, co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, said, I wish I had a daughter to give this wonderful book to. I need to find out if this book has more editions. I love this book so much. I have reread it so many times. This book made me laugh. It made me cry. I am a big fan of those type of books where it's like letters to our daughters, letters to our mothers, letters to our sons, any type of book like that. You know what I mean? I like those type of books. I love reading books also that are real stories from real people either to somebody else or just real like actual real stories um telling their experience or something they've seen happen that's why i love the chicken the chicken soup for the soul series is one of my favorite type of short story ish type books because i love those type of books i cannot get enough if you have recommendations for any books along the line of like this type of story or chicken soup for the soul or like letters to a young brother type book which was by hill harper let me know i love that so this book i actually funny enough i actually uh started rereading this book and then i finished rereading it after my mom passed away and it was actually turned out to be a good thing that i did finish rereading this um after that i had to push myself because i was uncomfortable to finish reading it but it turned out to be a good thing because i mean a mother's love is just hard to quantify i don't think they've made words for what that is you know and it just kind of reminds you you know that and i'm not a mother right now i'm a godmother but i'm not a mother um but i just love that it just teaches you so much and just especially when you get older it makes you reflect so much on just all the things our mothers do for us you know just the selflessness um just I just think about little things like that and I'm just so amazed, you know, like the love you have to have for another individual to do those things. And these stories in here, it was so beautiful because, you know, they wrote these stories to their daughters. Some of them included pictures. They're black and white, but some of them included pictures to their daughters. And it was such a variety in the story, you know, from people who had adopted to people who um had went about it by other methods or single mothers mothers who were married immigrant mothers you know um just it was so dynamic and i love this and i would if this doesn't have any more additions i think that they should absolutely do some more additions and update this book because i would get them all i love this so much and i can't wait for my goddaughter to read it and when i have kids so yeah I feel like I rambled enough about all those books, but that's kind of what this tag is about. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing some of the books that are on my shelf. And thank you so much for tagging me, Bertie. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, again, all of that information will be down in the description box. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.